Good morning, folks. We'll start with the confirmation of what you've all watched with me on a daily basis the last few months. Probably got sick of me saying there were too many storms in the North Atlantic. They were too strong, and that goes double for the wind power. Well, the experts have come down in agreement. I've linked this article for you below, demonstrating the fruits of diligent daily observation. Interestingly, the home of the strongest northern storms is taking a break today. Wind drive due north with only some vapor shear affecting the frozen shores to the northeast. Downpour seasons continuing with moisture drive off the sea, cupped by mountain ranges and left with nowhere to go but down. Similar mechanism works over Africa, although this time of year can come from both sides. Couple things to note down under. Could see rain in New Zealand, but the bigger events will be from the convergence swinging up to Sydney and Melbourne, and with the tropical cell still active to the north, another to the right near the islands that may die before it gets too far south. Ready to see the top storm potential for our viewers today? Solid counterclockwise drive sucking into the low trekking across the Midwest. To pull up the intensity, you see the overnight rain and snow on my doorstep. But, indeed, the bigger threat will be when you add in today's heat along the leading east edge. Thunderstorms will follow with a tiny chance of a tornado. That same warm lead and cold backside pattern holds true again here. Let's go to space weather. Took two gamma bursts yesterday. First one from Virgo, and another from Draco. The solar wind is dropping further, speed is under 300 kilometers per second with moderate density only. The solar flaring took the night off, but looks like it may charge back today. SDO has been frustrating this week. You try to analyze the sunspots and you're getting nothing but grainy images more than half the time. I'll quickly note the incoming sunspot to watch up north, but then let's go ahead and lean on Solon.info for a better look. This is the flare maker so far, almost center disk on the south. As stated in the past news, that's got delta class magnetics and the experts are now in agreement. Something interesting, last night's news reported a jump in our magnetic connection to the sun, heading to the backside looking grainy there. However, it appears that only a small portion of our connectivity is on the backside. A good bit of it is spread near the equatorial region wrapping back towards the earth facing disk. Top quake of the day was in the west pacific hopefully heralding a slowdown in magnitude. We did, however, take a five-pointer off the coast of Oregon, just north of the big one days ago. Save the top story for last, though. We have officially detected radioactive cesium on Fukushima debris at the Canadian coastline. This is the type of thing I've waited for since they called me crazy in 2011 for trying to create Fukushima awareness. In the Mobile Observatory, we'll be trying to monitor some of this as one of the observations and at places like the plutonium release near WIP in New Mexico. Please check out observatoryproject.com for more details. Current conditions of the jet stream and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.